God, I thank you this morning. I bless you. I honor you, mighty God. You are so good. You, you are such a good, good father. Just want to say, Father, I thank you for life. Just want to thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for joy, peace, and happiness. Thank you for the future. Because, Father, you live. We can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, yes, I know. He holds my future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you, Father. Thank you for dying for us on the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen. Wow. I love God so much. I love him so, so much. We are going to continue. Today we are dealing with the last part of restoration, restoring the love of God. You are welcome. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I can have my crow wave here to defrost your voice, to say amen. So I'll encourage you to do it voluntarily. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, yeah, that's a healthy amen. Hallelujah. Let us go to Revelation. I would like to see the scriptures here. Why is the, okay, my, my screen is off. My screen is off. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 up to 4. We are closing this, uh, restoring the first love. But today... We are talking about the limitless love of God. Hallelujah. We want us to share about the limitless love of God. Until we know how much God loves us, you won't know how to love him. Amen. The limitless love of God. Amen. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1 up to 4, I would like the whole church to read it. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 up to 4, it doesn't matter which version you are reading, which language, just read it. Hallelujah. Chapter 2, okay, start from 2. Revelation 2, from 2 to 4. 1, 2, 3, let us all read. Okay, let's stop. Uh, hear yourself when you are reading. In other words, uh, increase the volume of your voice. One, two, three, let us read. Okay, amen. I will read it for you in, in TPT. Uh, 
the Passion Translation. Listen, say, I know all that you have done for me. That's Jesus talking. I know all that you have done for me. You have worked hard. You have persevered. I know that you don't tolerate evil. We have tested those who claim to be apostles and proved that they are not, for they were imposters. I also know how you have bravely endured trials and persecutions because of my name. Yet you have not become discouraged. But I have this against you. You have abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. That's Jesus Christ talking to his church. If you are tired of hearing these words, we've got enough toilet tissues here. You can close your ears. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat them again. Jesus is saying, I've seen your works. I love the Passion Translation. He said, I know all that you have done. You have come here, you have cleaned the church. You have driven my children, you have fed my people. You have given to the church. You have done all that is wrong. But Jesus, as a lover of the church, as the husband of the church, he's saying, but I have this against you. You have abandoned the passionate love. Do you know what passionate love does? Passionate love makes you reckless. Do you know the reckless love of God? When your wife burns food when she's cooking, you blame the stove. That's passionate love. My dear, I think we need to change the stove. It's, it is not you, it's the stove. Hallelujah. When she makes a mistake, my dear, I think there is an evil spirit somewhere here. That is making you do funny things against me. I don't think you can do that against me. So, passionate love makes you blind. You don't see mistakes. You don't see wrongs. You, don't, you, you even lose the ability to count the mistakes. And God is saying, I've seen all your works, but you are too quick to judge. Am I talking to someone? You are too quick to condemn. You are too quick to criticize. Where should your fellow brethren live if they can't make mistakes in the church? Am I talking to someone? No, I think as a church we need to have these tough conversations. Am I right? Am I right? Am I talking to the church? The church of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. So, God is saying, it is that passionate love that will make you to go to your house and say, Mr. Matomo has stepped on my little toe. Father, you know how painful it is. But Heavenly Father, don't blame him. Maybe the shoes are too big. I know he loves me. And Father, I pray that you make him realize that he loves me. Am I talking to someone? We cannot have a church. Uh, th this was not my sermon, by the way. I don't know where I'm going, but God will continue. We cannot have a church where people are afraid to make mistakes. Imagine you have a child. Every time you make a mistake, he sleeps outside. You lock the doors. Every time you make a mistake, he sleeps outside. Do you know what you are doing to that child? You are saying, go and be on the streets. I want the church to have a self-introspection. 
How many people did we send on the streets? Am I talking to someone? I'm not going to tell you that you are blessed. This message is for blessed people. How many people have we sent on the street? Until we understand the limitless love of God, we won't be able to love unconditionally. Am I talking to someone? Until we come to a point where we understand the limitless love of God, you will realize that Pastor T is a person. The fact that she's called a pastor doesn't necessarily mean that she's immune to mistakes. No, no, let, let us tell the truth as it is. She might hurt you. Not that she woke up and planned to hurt you. Because she's human. And Jesus Christ died for that too. Thank you, Miss Liangane. I think she's the only one who can hear me. And Peter. Am I talking to someone? So, uh, today I want us to understand what is the limitless love of God? What is it that God is looking for? When he say, you have abandoned your passionate love. Because if we as a church can understand the passionate love of God, I'm telling you, the whole world, there will be no space here. Everybody will say, I'm going there. There, they will love me unconditionally. They won't even look at what I've done yesterday. They will be more concerned about my destiny than my past. Imagine a child of God saying, when I used to drink, I never faced so much condemnation in my life. They say, my fellow drunk people accepted me as I am. Until I went to the church. That's when I learned that a person can be evil. We cannot rebuild a post-pandemic church with evil hearts. I know you won't say amen. I don't, I don't need your amen. I need your yes. Even whether you say amen or not, it doesn't matter. We cannot build a post-pandemic church with evil hearts. We need to love just like Christ. If we go to 1 John 4, 19, it says, we love him because he first loved us. Uh, do you understand? We, we love him because he first loved us. How did he love us? When he was being nailed on the cross, your name was engraved on the palm of his hand. When a nail was going through on the cross, that nail was going through your name. How do you hate someone whom Jesus died for? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you want to pray an effective prayer? Love. Am I talking to someone? Do you want to pray an effective prayer? Forgive. Hallelujah. Now we are going somewhere. Now we are going somewhere. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you. Revelation 2 verse 4. Can I see it? Revelation 2 verse 4. Can you go to it again? I have this against you. You have abandoned your first love. Your passionate love. The disciples asked the Lord Jesus Christ, when he said, when I was naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was in jail, you didn't take care of me. They said to him, Lord, Master, but you have never been naked. You have never been hungry. 
You have never been in jail. What do you mean by that? He said, when you do that to your brethren, you are doing that unto me. Am I talking to someone? There is no miracle. There is no breakthrough. There is no answered prayer outside the boundaries of love. It is not possible. That's the reason why the first door, the key that God used to open the doors of miracle for Jesus Christ is John 3.16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. It is that Jesus Christ came through the door of love. He died through the door of love. He was hanged on the cross of love. He bled the blood of love. Why? For God so loved the world. Unlimitlessly. Endless love. Reckless love. He said, I loved you before you, you, you loved me before I have loved you. It means that everything that we are, we are not loving God because we are capable. We are loving him because he has given us the capacity to love. Am I talking to someone? Do you want breakthrough in your life? Forgive. Some of you, you have been praying for promotion. And guess who is standing on the door of your promotion? You. No one but you. I want breakthrough. Guess who's the stumbling block? You. There is only one key. Jesus Christ is saying, I see your words. Church, you have bought beautiful chairs. Eh? I love them. I love your worship. I love everything that you do. The lights. We like a studio. But to Jesus Christ saying, this is vain. Where is the first love? Do you know where, where, where did the first love go? Let us go to 2 Timothy 3, 1 up to 5. I'll read it also in Passion Translation. 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 up to, okay, 1 up to 5. He said this, but you need to be aware that in the, that's GPT, that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce. People will be, will be self-centered. Lovers of themselves. Obsessed with money. They will boast of great things. As they strut around in their arrogant pride. And mock all that is right. They will ignore their own families. They will be ungrateful and ungodly. That's up to two. Let me, let me read it in New King James Version. But note this. In the last days... Perilous times will come, for men will become lovers of, the, of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal despisers of good traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying his power. The worst thing that you can be is to have a form of godliness and deny his power. Do you know what does it look like? You look like somebody who's carrying a big gun 
It looked like a real gun, but it's a toy gun. Somebody comes with a small real gun, they will kill you. We cannot face the demons with self centeredness. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. We cannot face the demons with us being lovers of them ourselves. Let me tell you one of the ten plagues in Egypt. The plague of boils. Do, how many of you know what boils are? When people were swollen, the whole, all their bodies were swollen, their faces. That plague was there because the Egyptians were lovers of their bodies. They specialize in loving themselves. That's the reason why they came up with a chemical to preserve people even when they were dead. When the plague of boils came, it was coming to attack such a spirit. Self-love. Self-centeredness. And these are the last days. There is a lot of deception that is taking place. And if you can check, most of the things that are happening now that people love take place on Sundays. If you want to enjoy hiking, the best group that organized them will do that when? On Sunday morning. If you want to go swimming, it will be done when? Sunday morning. My son was about to join a club. I said it last week. Alberton Football Club. I stopped it. Why? All their official games are played when? On Sundays. Why am I telling you this? These are the last days. The spirit of deception has gone forth. Greatly to prevent human beings from having a meaningful and fruitful relationship with God. Because God said... Let us go to John 14. John 14, 15 to 17. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will pray the Father, he will give you another helper, that you will be able to abide in you forever. The spirit of truth. Many people don't know. Many of you have even heard this. That the key for the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life is to love God. The first time the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned the Holy Spirit, he will say, if you love me, keep my commandment. And he said, and I will pray the Father, he will give you another helper. The key word there is, if you love me. Having a form of godliness without power. What is the form of godliness? We know how to quote all the scriptures. God bless you. God bless you. Remember my child. God shall supply all your need. According to your riches and glory in Jesus Christ. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Amen. That is the form of godliness. Remember, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That is the godliness without power. Because we are only empowered by love. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell where there is no love. No, no. Am I talking to someone? No, don't worry. Even if you don't say amen today, I don't need them. I want to need your ears. I need your ears. Let us, the issue is that we don't, we, we don't read the scripture. Jesus Christ says, if you love me, leave my, keep my commandment and I will pray to the Father. He will give you another helper. He is linking the coming of the Holy Spirit with what? With love. Something that is not mentioned in the church. Because if we mention that Holy Spirit flow where there is love, we are going to step on a lot of people's toes.
You will wake up in the middle of the, in the, middle of the night. Pray, chant, quote all the scriptures. If, the, if, if, you, if you have no love, Shevenda Chirindi Mahanda na face. It's in vain. Am I talking to someone? So do you want to experience the limitless love of God? Let us, let us look at the word. God said, if you love me, can we, can we go to John 14, 15 to 17? I want us to read it all of all of us. John 14. Not Joanna 14, verse 1. DP Lu Saloon. I don't I, I don't know where that one is coming from. Check here. TPT translation says, Loving me empowers you. Loving me, that's that's Jesus Christ. He said, loving me empowers you to obey my commands. I will ask the Father. He will give you another helper, another Savior, the Holy Spirit of truth, who will be, who will be to you a friend, just like me. He will never leave you. The world won't receive him because they can't see him or know him. But you know him intimately because he remains with you he will live inside of you. Wow. Wow. If you want the Holy Spirit to live inside of you, what do you do? You love Jesus Christ. And how do we know that you love Jesus Christ? When you love those who are created according to his image. Because you can't see him. Love the Jesus in your brother. You will love your brother. Oh, okay. Love the Jesus in your sister. You love your sister. Love the Jesus in your neighbor. You love your neighbor. And when you do that, that's why I say, when you love me, it, it empowers you to obey his commands. Meaning, there are certain commandments in the Bible all of them, that you cannot obey because you are not living in love. Am I talking to someone? What are, what are his commandments? Give. It shall be given back unto you. A good measure, press shaken together, shall men give unto your bottom. No, I'm talking about giving your neighbor now. We will come to the church. I'm talking about giving your neighbor. One thing that I've learned since I've been a pastor for the last 12 years, you'll say, but you are young. Oh, it's fine. I've been a pastor for that long. An assistant pastor and pastor by my own. People who give outside, who love people, they are the ones who give the most even in the church. And they are the ones who flow in blessing. If you want to learn to give in the church, don't start in the church. Start with your neighbor. Am I talking to someone? Start with what? As I said, go and buy two loaves by mistake. He said, my children, I bought two loaves by mistake. One is yours. Be intentional in your mistakes. Go and buy two, two liters of milk by mistake. One of us here, she's seated here. God said to her, buy loaves. Take them next door. And milk. No, she's not here. Take them next door. When she knocked with those things, the grandmother cried. She said, how did you know that we are hungry? How did you know that the child needs milk? How did you know? She cried and stopped her She said, Pastor, I didn't know what to do, whether to run or not, but I just put the things down and walk out quickly because I don't know how to deal with the tears of an elder. I don't, are those not the tears that the church should be known for? Am I talking to someone? 
Are they not the tears that the church will be known for? That you went to your neighbor and your neighbor cried the tears of joy? You are sitting with someone here. You are, after church, you just say, I don't know my brother. Holy Spirit says, yes, six children. They say, how did you know I didn't have money to go to work tomorrow? Can we be that church? Am I talking to someone? Those are the commandments that Jesus is looking out to us. Because how many of you have seen Jesus live? If when the Bible says, when God says loves me, whom do you think he's talking about? If you have even met him, whom do you think he's talking about? He's talking about your neighbor. He's talking about your fellow brethren and sister. That is the commandment that the body of Christ is failing at today. Because we don't get to engage into these tough conversations. What was happening at church? Ah, Murutina Bora today. Now we are Kalirato. What? Out of all these things, I'm imagine, imagine, imagine me, imagine me loving Katleo. Just imagine. After all that he has done, ah, what? No, 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 you know, pastor is looking for trouble. I mean, just imagine me loving that man. I mean, you could have said I'm blessed or I'm healed or anything. Love. Let me tell you one thing. Your blessing is in love. Your healing is in love. Your increase is in love. Why? Because Jessica said, if you love me, we will come and abide in you. Do you know what happens when God abides in you? Can I tell you what happens? Look at the chairs that you are sitting at. I was sitting at home, took my phone, googled the picture, and said, Pastor T, Lavi, what do you think about these chairs? She said, they are nice. I said, I would like the chairs to have chairs like this. Two weeks later, I come back. We come on Thursday. The church is filled with the chairs that I was looking at on Google. Who was there listening? It's the one on the inside of you. So tell me, who listens to you when you are talking? If God is not abiding in you, if the Holy Spirit is not abiding in you, who listens to you when you are talking? The devil. And what does he go do? He closes the doors. What are they planning? They are, they are planning a business. Okay. Let's set up something. Let me tell you a, a story. You will understand this better. A young girl was going to the interview. It's a real story. It happened in SARS. I can't believe I mentioned that. A, a young girl was going to the interview. On the road, some lady cut her off by mistake. Yasuk. They fought. She went there, nearly bumped her and do that. The lady drove off. As she walked, it was her turn for interview. As she walked to the interview room, the lady that she was fighting with on the road was sitting there. What happened? The one on the inside of her listened and heard the conversation about the interview. And he set up circumstances to short change her. And she was a willing participant. So imagine if you are working in love. The one inside of you, when he hears your conversation, he set up circumstances. For what? For your good. For your favor. And you find yourself in a lift. Going for an interview. You see there is a man who said, I'm not going to go first after you, sir. And the man goes. After that, you find yourself, you're opening the door. You open the door after you say. And the man goes. You don't even know. You're going to a company. When you go to the interview panel, when you sit down, the man that you've been treating good all the time is seated there in the panel. You are already 10 points ahead. Before you can even say anything. Why? The Holy Spirit 
who lives on the inside of you. Because of love, when he heard about your interview, he set up circumstances for your favor. Am I talking to someone? And that's when you start now enjoying the limitless love. How so? Because the limitless love of God will make you do things that under normal circumstances you won't do. He sets you up. Am I talking to someone? He set you up. You find someone. There is a story. Pastor Michael David, I can mention him. He's my friend. One of the members in his church. He used to work for a furniture shop. He went. He was assisting a, a white man. He went there. He assisted him. He said that day he was at his best in politeness. He assisted him. He explained this. He was patient. He explained the system. This is how this system works. This is how this system do. And this was. And, and after that, after everything, the white man bought everything. And after that, I'm calling white man because of, of, of what I'm about to say. He bought everything. That's his story. And after that, after he said, Can I see you? They went out the same. I said, Can I have your numbers? The same. He called him. He said, I need somebody with people's skills like you to come and manage my airport. My terminal airport. As I'm talking to you now, he bought a house, North Cliff. The house on the cliff. From being a salesman to a manager. <laughs> Something that was never trained for. Why? The man walks in love. When he sees a person, he treats everybody in love. So the one on the inside of you will always set you up. Am I talking to someone? Learn to walk away from unforgiveness. Learn to walk away from unnecessary grudges. Not that there is a necessary grudge. I'm just using this word because it's in English. Walk away from those. When Jesus Christ said, if you love me, I and my father will come and dwell in you. Do you know what does that mean when God dwells in you? Do you know what does that mean when God dwells in you? No, no, you, 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 you are undermining this. Do you know what does that mean when God dwells in you? Your thoughts become his thoughts. Your wish becomes his command. Hallelujah. You, you, things don't happen because you have prayed. Because he said... I will grant you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. He said what? I will grant you the desires of your what? Of your heart. Make a decision, child of God. You want to enjoy the limitless love of God? Walk in love. Can I tell you effect? People are still going to hurt you. It's a fact. And people are still going to talk bad about you. It's a fact. People are still going to say nasty things about you. It's a fact. But can I tell you a solution? Love them anyway. Pray for them anyway. Wish them well anyway. Let their pain be your pain. Be their chief intercessor. Be the one who kneel down fast and pray for their success. And see what God will do for you. Am I talking to someone? That is the limitless love of God. Don't have a diary of wrongs that people have done for you. Can I tell you what that diary is for? I call it a diary of weapons against you. It's a diary of demons. Because every time when you open that diary, you become angry, one demon is activated. Your anger activates another demon. She has done this. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five... Seven, seven times, no, no. Seven demons are activated to work against you. 
Hallelujah. In closing this series of the restorative love of God, I want you to remember the words of Jesus Christ. John 8, 29. Can you go to John 8, 29? Let's start from 28. John 8, 28. Up to 29. I want you to read it. Uh, that Bible, it shows that you, you read the Bible. That's the reason why it's, going, it's, it's like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm laughing at her because a page just fell off. The page can only fall off if she's reading the Bible. A closed Bible won't have pages that are falling off. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, he was talking about his crucifixion, then you will know that I'm here and I do nothing by, of myself. But as my Father taught me, I speak these things. 29. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For I always do things that please him. I always do things. That pleased him. That is Jesus Christ. He said, my father has not left me because I always do things that please him. What does that mean? It means that there is a possibility that God can leave you, can, can leave you when you do things that do not please him. Especially on the commandment of love. Hallelujah. I know you didn't look at it that way. Can we read it again? 29 said, And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For, the qualifying word, for I always do things that please him. God has not left me. And earlier on he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Those are the things that please the Father. Keeping his word. And Jesus Christ says, I always do things that please him. Tell me, when you don't forgive, when you don't love, you are making yourself fail to partake in the limitless love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are certain breakthroughs. We don't need to pray for them. No. I can come and lay hands on you until your head is filled with my fingerprints. Say that when home affairs need my fingerprints, I send your head. That's how much I have prayed for you. It's not going to change anything if you do not have love. If you love God, Love his church. In closing, if you love God, love his church. I told you earlier on that there are some churches that were closed down because they could not afford rent. If God said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it and we decide to be gates of Hades, let me keep quiet. Let's go to 31. Verse 31. John 8, 31. Why am I telling you this? Re read it aloud. All of you. Why am I telling you this? John 8, 31. Thirty two. I'm telling you this so that you can be free. 
You don't need deliverance. You need the truth. Some of you, you just forgive, you are healed. I told you the story that was told by Pastor Theo Volmarans in Bible school. There was a lady, she was sick. Cancer. It was, it was on the last stage. She was about to die. God said to Pastor Theo, go pray for her. He prayed for her. Holy Spirit said, no, stop. She, 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 she won't be healed no matter how much you pray. Uh, Pastor Theo asked doctor, asked why? She is holding on to unforgiveness. And he said to a lady, God wants to heal you. Forgive. She said, that man hurt me, Pastor. The way that man hurt me, Pastor. I cannot forgive him. He hurt me so much. I cannot forgive him. And she died. So, to cut the long story short, she was not killed by cancer. She was killed by unforgiveness. So, because there are certain sickness and diseases that hold on unto unforgiveness. If you want to be set free, release. Hallelujah. Do you want to experience the limitless love of God? Release. Go back to the first love. In closing again, Paul said, do not be drunk with wine, but be drunk with what? With the Holy Spirit. Many of you don't know why he used the word drunk. To be drunk with the Holy Spirit. We need to look at the behavior of a drunk person even though we don't condone drinking. Go to a drunk person. Say to a drunk person, you are ugly. Ah, now we have fun. The song is the same. It won't go to his heart. He will laugh at you. Ah, you know, you, you, look, look, look at you. Ah, you, for what? For what? I'm fine the way I am. Okay, they were gossiping about you. Ah, we we'll all die one day. I'm not worried. What did they say? Let me tell you. I don't care. Don't tell me. Keep it yourself. But what they say was bad. Ah, you are bad too. Why? It's a drunk person. So when you are drunk by the Holy Spirit, you lose the capacity to be offended. I told you three weeks ago that some of you are asking me, Pastor, why do you go and pray for people who are talking bad about you? I said, no. They spoke bad about me, not the Jesus on the inside of me. So when the Jesus on the inside of me says, go pray for them, I will go do the work of the one who called me. The one who holds down to the grudges is Satan, the father of lies. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be free today? Do you want to live a life of joy, peace and happiness? Love. You shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Now, okay, I'm saying closing for the last time. Because if I say it again, you just jump up and say, Pastor, you said it again. Amen. We praise God for that. Amen. I want to share with you some of the things that can help you to do a self-introspection to do self-introspection is to show that you have lost the love of God. 
Because, you know, I can tell you to love as much as I want. I can come with all the millions of ex examples to show you how to love God and all that through your fellow brethren. But if you don't know what to check in yourself, the signs to show that you have lost the love of God, you won't be able to, to self-correct. Amen? Write them down. You know that the love of God is gone in your heart when you're always looking at your watch at church. <laughs> when you're always looking at the time at church. What are you saying? Your time, God, in your presence is wasting my time. <laughs> Did you hear me? What are you saying? This time in your presence, God is wasting my time. And guess who gave you time? God. So, God is wasting your time. Unalina, do you have time? That's the, that's the first sign that you have lost the love of God. Number two, when you don't, when you don't have a strong desire to spend time with God. When you don't have a strong desire to spend time with God, the passionate love of God is gone. Number three, when coming to church becomes a burden. Write it down. When coming to church becomes a burden, a person who's passionate with God will be passionate about spending time in his presence. Hallelujah. Do you know why? Because when you are here, when you are here, you learn what we taught you today, love. So it's in his presence where you learn to love your fellow brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So you become passionate to spend time with what? With God. I'm on number what? Number three. Number four, you don't have a strong desire for the word. Bible reading to you has become foreign. You have lost the first love of God. Read the Bible. Ah, I know which scripture. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. By his stripes I'm healed. My God is supplied. That is not reading the Bible. That is being desperate. When you're reading the Bible, you are spending time with God. It seems to be a monologue. It becomes dialogue. You hear him speaking to you as you speak to him through prayer. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. You have lost love. I'm going to number what? Five, ne? Number five. Private prayer and worship are almost non-existent. Cold and dry. How many of you lift up your church, your hands at home in worship? Alone. Father, I worship. Do that. Make sure that you are hungry for that worship. That worship is more powerful than the instruments that we have at church. Your own private worship, with your hands lifted up, ubimba only one. You're not going to the east, but God is looking at your heart. If that is non-existent, your love for God has grown cold. Can I tell you something? You will. You won't have the capacity to love your fellow brethren. If your love for God has gone cold. Hallelujah. This one is interesting. You crave for food. For physical food more than spiritual food. You, are, you have a remote control. TV here. 
your TV goes to TBN by mistake. <laughs> you change it so fast. <laughs> this pastor, this pastor's man, they are always talking. And you know that you have even been to church for three months. And God is trying to send someone through what you love the most, your TV, to talk to you. Because of the spiritual dryness, you can't even listen to the pastor on TV. You've lost the thirst for the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you only 10. Eh? You are more concerned about your looks than how God looks at you. And that's where the high king comes in. Let me put you, let me put this. The body that you are striving for won't go to heaven or hell. It's your soul and your spirit man that God is after. Am I talking to someone? Okay, we'll stop them here. I want you to stand up. Be quiet. I don't want you to pray. With every eyes closed. These ones, I want to read them to you. Whether you write them down or not, it doesn't matter. With every eye closed. You are more offended by the brethren in the church than your colleagues at work. You have lost the love of God. So I want you to think about that. How come is it easy to forgive your boss than your pastor? Because the love of God is gone. I want us to pray right now. You are not repenting of that repentance. Say, Father, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I'm coming back to you now. Again, this time, I want you to teach me to love you in my brethren. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. We shall be a loving church. We shall be a loving church. Denounce and renounce all forms of unforgiveness. Denounce them. Renounce them. They are not your portion. You are created according to the image of God. And the Bible says God is what? Is love. You are also what? Love. Talk, let's, let's, let's talk to our father. He loves us so much. Let's talk to him. Don't feel bad. Don't feel guilty. Say, God, I thank you that you told me this. Because I shall know the truth. And the truth shall set me free. Say it. I'm being free from unforgiveness. Say it. Say it. I'm setting. I'm free. I'm free. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. He loves you. I want to put it to you today. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you are going to receive calls of that breakthrough that you're waiting for. Not because you have done anything. Because your heart is pure. Because your heart is pure. Hallelujah. 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 Are you free? Can, may all those who are free begin to praise the Lord right now. I want you to praise him as somebody who is free. May all those who are ready to receive the limitless love of God begin to praise God right now. Praise him, praise him, praise him. If the limitless love of God is your portion,
Come on, praise him. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. I declare your promotion is coming to you. Your, your, your lifting up is coming to you. Your increase is coming to you. Not because you have fasted. Because he dwells in you. Hallelujah. Even you who is watching me from home, make a decision. Love, love Christ. You are the image of God. For God is love. You are also love. That's the only way to enter into the limitless love of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you praise him. God bless you as you praise him. God bless you.